hopefully by Monday, um, positive, I'll, I'll be done grading your exam and we will look at the results together, all right? Um, for the meantime, please be responsible and study. As I've said, this is a demanding subject. You've got to spend time at home actually studying this subject. It doesn't matter how much you understand in class. If you do not practice, it makes no difference. You've got to practice. And I'll keep saying this every day. You've got to practice. Physics is more than sports. It doesn't matter how much you are naturally talented. If you do not practice, you will not perform and you've got to practice. Get rid of all distractions when you're studying and do some problems. The number of problems I'll assign as homework will be less than the amount you will need to practice, so you need more. Now, the one way that I'm gonna encourage you is if you need more questions and you come to me, I'll give them to you and you will earn extra credit. So, for those, some of you who think that the homework is way small, just request for more questions and you have the opportunity to earn more extra credit. For those of you who are struggling, I'm here every day and I, I don't move. During lunch, I'm here. After school, I'm here for at least an hour or two. I live here approximately about 4.30 every day. So, come and I will help you. It's critical that you, you understand this. Now, today we will be looking at oblique projectile motion. And there are three major objectives of this lesson. Please listen, by the end of this class, you should be able to define what a projectile is. You should be able to analyze the motion of an object launched at an angle to the horizontal. When I mean analyze, you should be able to calculate the time of flight. You should be able to describe qualitatively and quantitatively the path the projectile takes. And you should be able to represent the motion of an object graphically. Now, these are the three main objectives for today. So keep yourself in check. We are going to begin with um, a little teaser. Uh, pulling started, two objects, A and B, are allowed to fall from rest side by side on a horizontal floor. Assume air resistance is negligible. If one of the objects is given an additional horizontal acceleration during its descent, 8A strikes the plane or the ground at the same time as the other object. B strikes the plane or the ground earlier than the other object. C has the vertical component of its velocity. Um, D has the vertical component of its velocity, of its acceleration altered. E follows a straight line path along the resultant vector. You have A, two balls are allowed to fall, right? In the course of the falling, you give one a push so that it goes like that. But this keeps falling. You understand, right? So um, analyze which of these statements is or are correct. All right, pulling and it. Remember, the rules of engagement today, is, there's no pressure. Whether you get it right or wrong, you earn a point. But if you get it right, you earn an extra credit point. You understand, right? Uh, so, so discuss amongst yourself. I'm going to end the poll now. All right. 91% of the class believes that the answer is A, the strike the ground at the same time as the other body. And yes, you all got it right. <laughs> yes, please. Uh-huh. Last class, I thought you said, I thought you said 
thought you said they only Please, the she's speaking. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. I thought you said they only hit the ground at the same time if they started at rest. They did start at rest. Now, it's a, it's a very good question. I expected that question. It's a beautiful question. And it's actually the reason why I gave this question, this problem. Both objects started at rest. You understand, right? Both objects started at rest. In the course of falling, you give a flick to one in the horizontal direction. You realize that we know for a certainty that the motion of an object in the x direction is independent of the motion of that object in the y direction. So if you give a flick in the x direction, it will not affect the falling. Therefore, it will not affect the time of fall. If you look at what we have done so far, the time it takes for an object to fall depends on what? The initial height and the acceleration due to gravity. And all of these quantities are in the y direction. So whatever you do in the x direction will not change. You understand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even if um, it has a horizontal acceleration after it's already been dropped. Yeah, even if it has a horizontal acceleration. Now, um, let me demonstrate to you what I mean. Um, okay, this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one, but most of you are already highly gifted, so um, you, may, you may get it. We, 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 I showed this. Listen up, listen up, please. Remember in class, we demonstrated this falls back in, right? What if I now put it on an inclined plane and it accelerates downwards? Will it fall back inside, ahead, or behind? Will it fall inside? Remember now, remember the cat and the barrel are on an incline, it will accelerate downwards. It will no more move with a constant velocity. If I launch the ball, will the ball fall back inside? Ahead or behind? Somebody should take a slow mo of this and send it to me by email. Um, how about. Oops. Okay. I would like for somebody to take it from this side. Um, can you take out the whiteboard? But I'd like to know how to pronounce your name. Katie, okay, great. Can you give me to how to put it here so that I could be able to? the question again. Okay. Let me ask the question again. Do you think it will fall in the cart, back in the barrel, in front or behind? Behind. If it's behind, put up your hand. If it's in front, put up your hand. In the barrel, put up your hand. Okay, just two people. Let's see who will win. Thank you, Felicity. Um, you're generous, even though you're not seeing it. Are you ready for this? Yes. 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 It four by thank you. That's a very she has good reflexes. Let me do it again. Let me do this again. Okay, that went forward. <laughs> okay, that went forward. <laughs> Let me do this again. This is ready to catch, right? Okay, let's watch. Maybe it got it the, in the first time by mistake. Yeah, yeah. What if you missing? 
Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all? Yeah. Really? The AP Physics C students thought that maybe it's because the angle was small. So we pile on more books and it still doesn't work even the better. Really? Yep. So are you ready? Okay, it's a slow movie, right? Okay, great. It works, right? Yes, please? What if there's no incline? Does it fall behind or still fall behind? Okay, let's try when there's no incline. I think it's all behind. Let's do this. Just fall back in. Sorry about that. What if it's small? What if it is? Okay, um. Do you think. Do you guys think it will fall in front or behind? Inside. Inside. Oh, inside. 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 All right, let's see this. It falls back inside. Thank you for listening. Um, so the question is... What is this black magic? <laughs> it is physics. It is not magic. <laughs> All right. Um, Okay, yes please. So I just have a question about the main mm -hmm. When you allow the, the cart to roll down an inclined plane, it has an acceleration along the inclined plane. Now, when the ball is launched, remember that the ball is launched from a barrel that is accelerating downwards the ball itself will still be accelerating along the plane while it's going up and it has the same acceleration as the card so it falls back into the card you understand that right how high the ball is launched. it doesn't matter how high the ball is launched the only determining factor is that there should not be air resistance yeah. that will cause the ball to do it to fall behind yeah, you understand that right and and this room is a pretty approximation of a room with no air resistance because the air in here is steel so it will not really affect the motion that much do you get it um so let's move on now really what is a projectile a projectile basically is any object whose motion is under the control of gravity let me put it this way a projectile is any object whose motion is under the influence of gravity. The force of gravity acts vertically downwards. What does this imply? It means that if an object is under the control of gravity alone, then the net force acting on that object will be vertically downwards. And if the force is vertically downwards, it implies the following one the horizontal velocity of the object will remain constant the horizontal component of the velocity will remain unchanged and if the horizontal component of the velocity remain unchanged it means that the acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero and secondly <coughs> If the force of gravity is only acting vertically downward, which it is, it means that the object has an acceleration in the y direction. And we know that the acceleration is the acceleration due to what? Gravity. Do you understand that? Is the acceleration due to gravity. Now, before we actually begin doing some algebra and analyzing projectile motion, I want for us to review a couple of things. I want for us to review a couple of strategies on how you can solve a projectile motion. And please, these steps will help you to simplify any problem in projectiles. I will demonstrate how it's used and how it's applied. So therefore, I call upon your attention. The very first thing that you need to do in a projectile motion problem is to choose a coordinate system with a convenient origin is to choose a coordinate system with a convenient origin 
Now the second step that you do after choosing a coordinate system with a convenient origin is to resolve the initial velocity vectors into its x and y components. Resolve the initial velocity vectors into its x and y components. Now listen carefully. Because the horizontal motion is totally independent from its vertical motion, then we can treat the horizontal motion and the vertical motion independently. Let me say this again. When you resolve the initial velocity vector, then you can analyze the horizontal motion independent from what? The vertical motion. What do we know? We know that in the horizontal direction, the acceleration is zero. What this means is that the model used to describe the horizontal motion is the constant velocity particle model. Do you get that? But then the model used to describe the vertical motion is the constant acceleration particle model. You realize that we have effectively reduced a two-dimensional motion into a one-dimensional motion, which will make our calculations easy. And the last step, which is often the easy one, is when we break this down, we can use the kinematics equation of motion in one dimension to analyze the motion in the x and in the y direction. Now, I'm going to demonstrate to you what that means. A freely falling body has a constant acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. What does this mean? For some reason, some students always have a difficult time answering this question. What does it mean for an object to have an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared? Okay, great. Let's stop. That's a countdown timer. I didn't know I got this fancy. <laughs> I know, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, everybody has voted, so let's see. Hmm. That's interesting. Now, about 10% of the class think the answer is B, 10% think the answer is C, 10% think the answer is D, but overwhelmingly, about 70% think the answer is E. So let's see what happens. Um, what does it mean? What is acceleration? Acceleration is defined as what? The rate at which the velocity changes. Do you understand that? The rate at which the velocity changes. In other words, if an object has an acceleration of, let me say it this way, if an object has an acceleration of 4 meters per square second, what this means is that the velocity of the object of increases by 4 meters per second every second. So the answer obviously should be E. So majority of the class got it right. Do you understand the meaning? Okay, great. Now let's analyze a projectile particle motion. When a projectile is launched, maybe you kick a soccer ball at a certain angle, theta. It follows a projectile path. By the end of today, we should derive and interpret algebraic expressions for the time to reach maximum height, for the maximum height, for the time of flight, the horizontal range, as well as the equation of part. Remember I told you guys yesterday, when we talk about the equation of part, we are looking for y as a function of what? x. Do you understand that? We are looking for y as a function of x. But I want you to observe something. Understand that we can resolve the initial velocity into its y component and its x component. And at any time moment in time, we can resolve the velocity vector into what? Its 
x horizontal component and its vertical component there is a mistake here this is just um, vx in the first half of the motion the vertical component vy is greater than zero in the second half of the motion the vertical component vy is less than zero why because in the first half of the motion the object is rising and in the second half of the motion the object is what falling do you understand that but at maximum height vy is equal to what zero vx is not equal to zero what this means is that at maximum height the velocity of the object is purely purely horizontal don't forget this the velocity of the object is purely horizontal now let's look at the initial velocity vector now from what we have seen the particle is projected at a certain angle with an initial velocity v naught at an angle theta what you realize is this will be its x component v o x and this will be its y component v o y we can use our basic trigonometric knowledge to express the x component and the y component as follows the sine of theta is remember our little thing so catwar the sine of theta is opposite which is just v o y divided by the hypotenuse v o this means that v o y is equal to v o sine theta and cosine theta is equal to v o x over v o this means that v o x is equal to v o cosine theta initial velocity vector can be expressed as v o cosine theta i plus v o sine theta j all right let's look at the acceleration vector we know that a is equal to a x i plus a y j but but a x is equal to what zero right do you agree with me it's equal to zero because the gravity acts vertically downwards only and this is only true in the absence of air resistance we know that a y is just negative g therefore the acceleration a is negative g So we can conclude that the object only accelerates in the vertical direction. And I need for you to write that down. The a projectile only accelerates in the vertical direction. Now let's look at the position vector. The position vector of the projectile R is expressed as xi plus yj. You saw this when we started motion in two dimensions. Okay, um, please look up. Look up. I'm gonna do this, divide this into two columns. This is the x motion, and this is the y motion. Initially, x naught is zero, v o x is v naught cosine theta. Initially, y naught is zero, v o y is equal to what? v naught, the sine of theta. We know that x is equal to x naught plus v o x t plus half 
ax t squared. Now, the acceleration in the x direction is zero. The particle initially begins at the origin. This would mean that x is equal to what? V naught cosine theta all multiplied by t. This is the expression for the horizontal displacement with as a function of time. As a function of time. Now, we now have here y equal to y naught plus v o y t plus half a y t squared. Initially, the particle begins at the origin. So we are going to have y equal to v o sine theta multiplied by t minus half g t squared. Yes, please. Now, for, she said, ask the question, for the x motion, why is the acceleration zero? Remember, initially, when I started the lecture, I said that the force of gravity, the, a projectile, is an object whose motion is under the influence of gravity alone. And the force of gravity acts vertically downwards. You understand that, right? Therefore, the net force acting on the projectile is vertically downwards. And as a result, since there is no force in the x direction, the acceleration in the x direction is zero. Because acceleration only exists only when there is a word, net force in that direction. The acceleration in the x direction is zero. And this statement is true for all projectile motion. This statement is true for all projectile motion. All right, I want you guys to see something here. This is the expression for the displacement in the x direction. This is the expression for the displacement in the y direction. This is a linear function of y at time. This is a quadratic function of y at time. You realize that the coefficient of t squared is negative, which means that this curve here has a maximum turning point. So if we draw the graph of x against t, the graph will look like this. And the slope of this graph, the slope of this graph will just be equal to v naught cosine theta. But if we draw the graph of y against t, the graph will look like that. Now, keep in mind that this is the maximum height y max, and this is the time to reach maximum height t max. This is the total time of flight. This is the total time of flight. Observe that this curve is symmetrical in time. What do I mean? The time to reach maximum height is equal to what the time it falls back to where it started. What this means is that the time of flight is equal to two times the time to reach maximum height. This is an important statement. So the path of a projectile is symmetrical in time. So if you throw this object up and you catch it where it was thrown, the time it takes for the particle to reach where maximum height is equal to the time it falls back to where it started. And this is actually demonstrated on this graph. Do you understand that? Now let's move on. Let's look at the instantaneous velocity vector. This is also another interesting one. We are going to analyze the x motion separately from the y motion of the object. We initially know that v o x is v naught cosine of theta and v o y 
is V naught, the sine of what? Theta. We know that AY is negative G, and we know that AX is what? Zero. These statements are true irrespective of what kind of projectile you're dealing with, as long as air resistance is zero. Yes, please? Oh, thank you. Um, rather, thank you. Uh, rather, this is reverse. AX is zero. Thank you for that. That's very keen. And this is negative Y. Generally, what do we know? We know that VX will be equal to VOX plus AX multiplied by T. This guy here is zero. What this means is that VX is equal to VOX, which is equal to V naught cosine of theta. <coughs> now, why is this? This is actually expected. Why? Because the, the acceleration in the x direction is what? Zero. This would mean that the horizontal velocity remains constant. And we have just proven that. If you look at this expression, it is not a function of time, which means it remains constant. Are you with me? It is not a function of time, which means it stays the same. And that is because the acceleration in the x direction is zero. On the other hand, we have here Vy is equal to Voy plus Ay sub t, which means that Vy is equal to V naught sine of theta minus g sub t. You do realize that the y velocity is a function of time, so it changes, it varies. Hence, if we plot graphs, this is critical for projectile motion, therefore it's important for you to understand this. And why am I, you know, going the extra length of showing you how this is provided or derived? Because you are required to know this for AP Physics 1. Um, for the Motion in the horizontal direction, what do we know? We know that the initial velocity in the horizontal direction is V naught cosine theta. The acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero. Now we want to calculate the velocity of the object in the horizontal direction. Therefore, listen carefully now. We can use this kinematics equation. But the good news for us is the velocity is what? Zero. So this term, let me pick another color. So this term cancels out. This becomes zero. This means that the horizontal velocity is just equal to the initial velocity in the word horizontal direction. What is it? It is V naught cosine of theta. And this actually agrees with our previous explanation because we know for a fact that in the absence of air resistance, the only force affecting this motion is the force of what? Gravity. And it acts only vertically downwards. If it acts vertically downwards, it means that for a projectile particle, in the absence of gravity, what can only accelerate in the vertical direction. It will not accelerate in the what? horizontal direction. Now let's shoot over to the y motion. We know that the initial velocity in the y direction is v sine theta. And the acceleration in the y direction is negative. We are assuming that the upward direction in this case is y positive. Since the acceleration is vertically downward, we want, it's going to be negative. From the fact that Vy is equal to Voy plus Ayt, Ay is negative G and Voy is that guy. All we have to do is substitute and we land it on this equation. Which is great because it actually demonstrates something. If we draw a graph of T, this is Vx, it's just a straight line graph. This is V naught cosine theta. But if we draw a graph of this is T, 
this is vy the graph begins somewhere here and uh, goes like that this is going to be v naught sine theta what is this point where the velocity of the particle is zero what is that point maximum height great maximum height and this is the time to reach maximum height one thing you need to understand is this the area here and this area here this area one and this area two a1 is equal to what a2 in magnitude who can explain why good because the projectile motion is symmetrical about time <clears throat> but the reason is because remember the area under a velocity time graph signifies displacement and therefore if the projectile part is symmetrical which we just proved this explains why this area is equal to this area do you understand that okay great let's move on let's look at the instantaneous speed first of all the velocity of the particle can be expressed as vxi plus vyj which is just gonna be equal to v naught cosine theta i plus v naught sine theta minus gtj this is the general expression for the velocity vector we know that speed v is just the magnitude of what the velocity vector and this is going to be given by pythagorean theorem so this is just gonna be v naught cosine theta all squared plus v naught sine theta minus gt all squared so this will be the speed of the particle at any time t that will give us the speed of the particle at any time t now the next thing i would like for us to consider is to calculate the time it takes to reach maximum height is to calculate the time it takes to reach maximum height What happens at maximum height? What happens at maximum height? At maximum height, what happens? Vy is equal to zero. Somebody just said V is equal to zero. That is only true under what condition? If the object is projected vertically upwards. But if the object is projected at an angle at maximum height, Vx is not zero, but Vy is zero. And that is what we are going to use to calculate the time to reach maximum height. Look up, everybody. At max height, Vy is equal to zero. But we know that Vy is equal to V naught sine theta minus gt. So this means that V naught sine theta minus g t max is equal to zero if we solve for t max t max will be equal to v naught sine theta all divided by g v naught sine theta all divided by g let me let me put this this way the time to reach maximum height t max is equal to what v naught sine theta all divided by g what is v naught sine theta all divided by g what is this 
the vertical component of the velocity. Hence, we could say that T max, that was really great, is equal to V O Y divided by Y G. In other words, the time to reach maximum height depends on what? The initial vertical velocity. The bigger the initial vertical velocity, the bigger the maximum height. Do you understand that? The bigger the initial vertical velocity, the bigger the maximum height, and the bigger the time to reach maximum height. This is what we have done so far. So far, we have shown that one, that the initial velocity v naught can be expressed as v naught cosine theta i plus v naught sine theta j. Two, we have shown that the position vector r can be expressed as what? v naught cosine theta all multiplied by what? t i plus v naught sine theta all multiplied by t minus half g t squared j. In other words, some people prefer to write it this way. x is equal to v naught cosine theta multiplied by t and y is equal to v naught sine theta multiplied by t minus half g t squared. Yes, please, a question? Okay, the third thing that we've done so far is we know that Vx is V0 cosine theta. It does not change. The horizontal velocity remains unchanged. And uh, we have also shown that Vy is equal to V0 sine of theta minus gt. And we know that Vy is equal to zero at maximum height and lastly we know that the time to reach maximum height t max is equal to v o sine theta all divided by g which is just gonna be v o y divided by g what this means is that the time of flight which is two times t max will be equal to two v naught sine theta all divided by g this gives us the time of flight so these are the major things that we have done so far and we are going to build upon these concepts any questions listen up carefully i intentionally wrote down this statement keep in mind if you didn't write this statement down it's the best time for you to put it down the time to reach maximum height is dependent upon the vertical component of the initial velocity of the projectile and the acceleration due to gravity. What does this imply? This means that for a given planet, the greater the initial vertical velocity, the greater the time to reach maximum height. For example, let me show you, give you an example. So if we have two particles projected at two different angles that is theta 1 this is theta 2 theta 1 is greater than theta 2 which particle will hit the ground first A or B at the same time which particle will hit the ground first, A or B? Remember that T time to reach maximum height is equal to what? V naught sine theta over G. If theta is large, the sine of theta will be large and therefore the time to reach maximum height will be large. So two particles are projected simultaneously one with a larger angle and one with a smaller angle so which one will hit the ground first a or b b will hit the ground first so the time to reach max height for b is less than the time to reach max height for a so b 
hits the ground first. Now the next thing that I would like for us to look at will be to calculate the maximum height of the projector. This is kind of um, pretty straightforward. All we need to do is to, you know, sharpen our algebraic skills. Now look up everybody. We know that there are two things we have derived today, actually three. We know that Y, which is the vertical displacement, is given by V naught sine theta multiplied by t minus half g t squared. We also have derived the fact that the time to reach maximum height is v naught sine theta over g. Therefore, maximum height y max will be equal to v naught sine of theta. All we need to do is substitute the value for max height in there. This is v naught sine theta over g bracket minus g v naught sine theta all divided by g all right squared. This would mean that y max is going to be equal to v naught squared sine squared theta over g minus v naught squared sine squared theta of our 2g. If we simplify this, what is this going to be equal to? This is going to be equal to v naught squared sine squared theta all divided by 2g. In other words, in other words, the maximum height h max some people prefer to write it y max i really don't care is equal to v naught square sine square theta all divided by what 2g this is the expression for the maximum height of a projector h max h max has been derived to be v naught squared sine squared theta all divided by 2g this can be rewritten as v naught sine theta over g all of this all squared multiplied by g over 2 have i changed anything this the, let's expand this bracket this is v v naught square sine squared theta over g square right then one of these g's will take care of this and we'll end up with, with that expression. Have we changed anything? But who has recognized something in there? What is this? That is the time to reach maximum height, right? This means that h max is equal to t max squared g over 2. Yes, please? It's okay. Look at it this way. We want this expression to be equivalent to this. So if we expand this bracket, if we expand this bracket, we are going to have this is v naught square sine sine square theta divided by g squared. Now this g will cancel out with one of the g to give back this. Do you see with me? All right, let me expand so you could see. I'm going to use red. If we expand this expression, we are going to have v naught squared sine squared theta all divided by g squared. If we multiply this by g over 2, you realize that we have added a g here, which is unnecessary, right? This would take care of this, and we end up with this expression. Do you see that now? Great. This would mean that, looking at this, this would mean that T max is equal to the square root of 2H max divided by G. Have you seen this expression before? Have you seen this expression before? You see that it's the same, right? 
expressed in a different way. What is this telling us? That the time to reach maximum height is proportional to the maximum height, right? So if you have two projectiles, one with a greater maximum height, definitely you will take more time to climb a taller mountain than to climb a shorter mountain, isn't it? So, let's look at this question. Pulling started. Two shells simultaneously fired at an enemy ship with the same initial velocities along the trajectories as shown. The shells leave the battleship at different angles and travel along the parabolic trajectories indicated by A and B in the figure above. Which of the following statements best describe the motion of the two objects? A. The object moving along the trajectory A hits the ground before the object moving along the trajectory B. B. The object moving along the higher trajectory A hits the ground after the object moving along the lower trajectory B. C. Both object hits the ground at the same time and D. Not enough information is given. Which one is correct? Um, so, show by choosing the right answer. Okay, I'm ending the poll now. Great. <laughs> so I probably have to click twice then. Um, overwhelmingly, the class picks 95% of the class think the answer is B. Let's look at something. The maximum height for B. This is the maximum height for A. Which one is bigger? H of B is less than H of A. This means that T max of B is less than T max of A. Therefore, B will hit the ground after A. True or false? False, definitely. So the answer should be B. An awesome, awesome, almost in the entire class picked the right answer. Now let's look at the time of flight. Look at something. When the particle goes up and hits the ground, what is the vertical displacement? When the particle hits the ground, what is the vertical displacement? Zero. Y is equal to zero. We know that Y is equal to what? V naught sine theta multiplied by what? T minus half G T squared. And all of this should be equal to zero. Anyway, we've already shown that, look up, we've already shown that T max is equal to V naught sine theta over G. And we know that the time of flight is just two times the time to reach maximum height, right? Therefore, the time of flight t will be 2 v naught sine theta all divided by g. This is the time of flight. But one thing, you can derive this equation by solving that quadratic equation. And uh, let's see. Um, to solve that quadratic equation, that's kind of, you will, can factorize out t, you realize that you have here v naught sine theta minus half gt bracket t equal to zero. We know that t can never be equal to zero. What this means is that, um, let me write here. What this means is that V naught sine theta minus half GT is equal to zero. If you solve for T, T will be equal to two V naught sine theta all divided by G, which is still that equation, which is still that equation. 
so we could do this in a variety of ways um, it will still give us the same answer but the only thing I really need for you to what burn into your mind is the fact that one there is time symmetry in projectile motion there is time symmetry in projectile motion in other words the total time of flight is twice the time to reach maximum height and the time symmetry implies listen carefully the statements are up on the board bold watch time symmetry implies that the time required for the upward motion is exactly equal to the time required for the downward motion similarly we have shown that look look up everybody we know that t is 2 v naught sine theta over g which is just 2 v o y over g therefore the time of flight depends on two things the magnitude of what the initial vertical velocity and the acceleration due to gravity and the magnitude of the initial vertical velocity look up everybody v o y is v naught sine theta this therefore means that the total time of flight depends on the initial speed and the angle of projection this question please the countdown timer once it stops the results will pop out word 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 okay now overwhelmingly the class choose b and the answer is b that's great now look up everybody the maximum height for a is way bigger than the maximum height for what b therefore b spends less time in air compared to a as a result ship a is hit first no sorry ship b is hit first so great job great job let's look at the horizontal range now look up everybody this is a projectile path this is the horizontal range the horizontal range is an x distance the maximum height is a y distance now the definition of the horizontal range is as follows the range of a projectile is the horizontal distance traveled by the projectile before it hits the ground let me say that again the horizontal distance traveled by the projectile before what happens it hits the ground and this is kind of pretty fun to do we know that generally the horizontal distance x is given by v naught cosine theta all multiplied by t we know that the time of flight capital t is 2 v naught sine theta all divided by what g therefore the horizontal range r will be equal to v naught cosine theta multiplied by 2 v naught sine theta over g and this should be equal to 2 v naught squared sine theta cosine theta all divided by g remember that from trick from trick 2 sine theta cosine theta is just sine 2 theta right this therefore implies that the horizontal range is gonna be equal to v naught squared sine 2 theta all divided by g this is the horizontal range 
look at the expression for maximum height h max is equal to v naught squared sine squared theta all divided by 2g is it g or 2g do you see a connection here look at this on the board please take some time at home to see if you see a connection between the range and the maximum height and there is but observe something we know that sine theta max is equal to 1 when this happens theta is equal to what 90 degrees this would mean that sine 2 theta max is equal to 1 and 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees and if that is the case theta will be equal to 45 degrees hence if you look at sine 90 this is equal to 1 what this means is that the range of a projectile is maximum the maximum range is v naught square over g and this occurs when theta is 45 degrees is it possible to project a particle at two different angles but the two projectiles will have the same range is it possible they have the same velocities it's possible if you can show that to me you earn five extra credit points next class and I'll demonstrate it to you next class now let's look at the equation of path we know that y is equal to v naught sine theta multiplied by t minus half gt squared and x is equal to v naught cosine theta multiplied by t this would mean that t is equal to what x v naught cosine theta if you substitute this back into the first equation you will have y equal to v naught sine theta x over v naught cosine theta minus half g x v naught cosine theta all squared sine over cosine should be sine over cosine is tangent the v naught will cancel so y is equal to x the tangent of theta minus half x squared divided by v naught squared cosine squared theta this is the equation of part of a projectile launch at an angle oh there is a g thank you on top thank you for your time um, i'm looking forward to the next class where we are going to do some examples and we are going to start a brand new section next class dynamics which is basically the study of forces <laughs>